Hi everyone, this is Warren from the Rev City Piano Studio. We want to welcome you to today's live lesson. We're going to be learning Magnolias in the Middle on piano. This is from Martha Mears Romantic Impression Series, and this is book four. This is going to be for, I'd say, like a late intermediate uh, piano. Okay, uh, make sure to hit up the links for the sheet music and also the tutorials and also I, I have the entire book recorded by the way so you could in theory use all the stuff that I'm teaching you here in this one song, this one piece and you can apply it to all the tutorials in the entire book. Okay, and also you're gonna wanna make sure to be using these tutorials because it's almost like a self guide. You're, you're kinda testing to see if you understand all of these things that I'm showing you in these lessons, okay? All right, uh, before we start, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you're not a subscriber, would love to have you on Team Rhapsody. And also, uh, what was I going to say? All right, uh, also hit that notification bell too if you want to catch whenever I go live. Currently, my schedule is going to be every Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, about 11 a.m. Pacific time out in California. Okay, so this is Magnolias in the Metal. I'm gonna show you uh, how I would practice this, how I would teach this to one of my students, the, the plan that I, uh, I would lay out for them, okay? All right. All right, so it, if you can really take a guess, what I did there is that I took just the first part. <laughs> Okay, so that's about uh, the beginning to measure five. That's a little introduction. And we call this process, you can call it small chunking. There's a lot of other people who call it different names in the you know, learning literature. But I'm just going to call it small chunking. So you're going to take one small chunk at a time. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to play it for you first, and just like I did right here. Because if you want to learn it a little bit more rapidly, rapidly, you don't know the song well enough, then this is the way to do it. You need to be observing you know, listening to the music and, you know, th these videos are awesome because not only can you hear the sounds and the rhythm that I'm playing with, you can actually see the notes that I'm playing as well. So observation, observation is going to help a lot, which is why I'm going to demonstrate first for you before uh, we play. And then we do it together at the same time. It's like different ways of using these uh, tutorials and these lessons. Okay, I'm going to go back and just give you the right hand. going to simply try it together and don't worry if you can't try it with me right now like if it doesn't go too well I will explain why that doesn't really matter okay from the beginning with the right hand if you can ready go Simply switching to the left hand. Let me scoot this back a little bit. It doesn't scoot back. Never mind. All right. All right. Try it with me. Ready, go. Back to both hands. Together, ready, go. So I'm going to explain why it really doesn't matter if you didn't nail that the first time because there's this concept called space repetition and I've been beginning all the live streams talking about it because it's such a, a game changing type of practice. You really want to look it up. It's called spaced repetition. So 
it doesn't matter like how many times you do it in a row. What matters more is how much time you take in between these repetitions. So I mean, so you could try it like a few times now, and you're kind of getting there. It's a little bit decent. It's actually more effective to go and do something else. You can take a break. You can practice something at the same time, which is also another good thing about this way of practicing. And then you come back to it later on in the session. You know, like today, let's say you practice this part, and then you waited about. About 10 minutes doing something else and then you came back and practiced it again it's actually more efficient than just doing it consecutively all right and you can even go as far as stretch it out into days and things like that too a software that i use uh and they kind of kind of demonstrate this is called anki a-n-k-i you should look it up it actually automatically tells you i mean it's more for language purposes than studying tests but i've applied it for piano and it actually automatically tells you how long to wait in between okay um yeah, so remember that concept. You don't need to do it many times. You just do a few times. You can even skip it for a day and come back to it the next day too. And you can also apply this to listening, by the way, which is why I play it for you first. And believe it or not, I've, had, I've done experiments even with my students where I told them to not even play a piece, some of the music that uh, I teach in my studio. And you know, like I have these videos, right? So I actually, I've tried it where I've made them just listen to it for an entire week, not even having played it. And they do a lot, a lot, like it's, it's like 10 times better when they're practicing. If you wanna, if you wanna go that route. Okay, here's the next part. All right, that's the next part. So this measures five. Two nine. Here's just right right hand, and we're gonna take it from the pickup to measure five. All right, I'm gonna just go through some difficult parts a little bit slowly. So this is measure six. She wants you to hold that top note while you have this 16th, uh, 16th note pattern on the bottom into an a, ma a flat major chord. See that? Of course, when you use pedal, it'll be a lot smoother. That's what it sounds like without pedal. Now here, I'll use a two. I think two is fine. You can go three, two. And you see the next one is also two. So it's almost like you kind of lightly tap these on the bottom while voicing on the top. And then here, I just simply slide my second finger to the C flat. Okay, so let me show you one more time. To try it together, I'll slow it down for you guys. So, this is the pickup to measure five. Ready, go. All right, I'm going to show you left hand. This is not like amazing, but here we have E flat major or F flat or F minor chord. Back to uh, what is this? Like a G minor. And then we have a B minor seventh, B flat minor seventh. For those of you that want that type of analysis at home, so that's that's a little quick little breakdown. Okay. root position I'm showing you. This is much as I'm going to show you guys, alright? It's pretty simple. Okay, left hand, let's try it together. This is measure five. Ready, go. Alright, back to both 
both hands. Together, pick up two five. Ready, go. Okay, so this is the middle part of the first page. We're going to finish it off the next section. Notice that that rhythm I might be playing it wrong in the tutorial and I just realized it now so this is measure 9 if you use the tutorial later I think I'm playing regular eighth notes there but it's supposed to be a 16th okay so let me play for you one more time sorry that was what was throwing me off It's just the right hand. I don't know where, to, where to start this? All right, there, there it is. All right, and then I'm going to uh, take this lesson without any retardandos, just for you to, to practice really nailing that rhythm at home. Okay. Take it from the pickup again, to nine, right hand, ready, go. All right, here's left hand, same thing, pick up to nine. That might actually be the hardest uh, measure on the whole entire page. Just for how fast you have to go through this. She says 1-5, but you know, I don't think that's necessary. I use a 1-2. I did it here if you'd like. Yeah, I guess that works better. She has a 5-1-2-3. And here she has a five five three, but I find that weird. I just do five one one two. Okay, so for you guys who want to make that change at home, all right, let me show you one more time. Yeah, it's kind of hard to do in time. All right, let's do that together now. Left hand, we'll take it slower. Ready. Go. Yeah, okay, so actually let me go ahead and take that retard down though because it, it just doesn't make sense without it. Uh... So for that one, um, any any similar parts like that, I will take a retardando because it makes more sense musically, actually. All right, let's do that together from the pickup to nine. Ready, go. All right, so. Let's keep count. How many sections do we have so far? We have the intro, then we have measure five, which is the first part, 
and then was it nine to the end of the page, which is the second part. So we can consider it intro and then A1, A2, if you want to label it at home. And then usually it just repeats. It's, it's kind of like a, the, these compositions by Martha Muir are usually a bit you know, simple. I mean, it, it's kind of it's kind of complex and cool what she does with it, but it's usually like an A, B, A pattern in some sense like that, or like A, B, C, okay? All right, so we're gonna put this whole entire page together now. I'm gonna go back and uh, do it from the beginning. I'll give you, well, I'll, oh, we're gonna follow the same format. We're gonna do hands together. I'm gonna show you that. Then just try with me, right hand, left hand, hands together, okay? All right. same time just want to make a quick note that if you're not used to doing sections this long and also if you're not used to doing music at this difficulty it's going to take some time to build this up into bigger sections if your concentration is not there you just have to be patient and then keep on practicing every day okay it's like the same thing as strength training in the gym if you're not used to weighing or not weighing but if you're not used to lifting heavy weights you can't just automatically have to lift a heavy weight unless you want to break your bones right so your strength has to get there in the same way that you have physical strength, you have mental strength. So you got to build up your brain, okay? Your brain has to get stronger if you're not able to do it. All right, let's do right hand from the beginning. This is the first page. Ready, go. here we are now officially in the B section you can just call this like the development section if you want a little bit different things going on a lot of ideas developing which is why they call it this way so something contrasting okay here's just the right hand if you notice here we're just gonna break down uh, what's cool about Martha Mir is just, just use a lot of simple patterns and makes them sound 
a lot harder than it seems. So it's actually just... So basically this entire part on uh, measure 13 is just a C minor arpeggio. Which is why you kids at home should be practicing, well I don't know if you're a kid, but you should be practicing arpeggios and scales constantly, right? So. Just F major chord. So we're going to C minor chord, F major chord. Alright, so that's another way to practice it if you'd like. Alright, uh, and then. Okay, and the left hand. Same thing, same harmony. So. Pattern right here, and then. Basically it. Now, if you look at measure 16, same thing actually. All right, so let's go back. Let me just show you the right hand now. Okay, and then if you're uh, trying to make it more musical, definitely you need to be practicing just the voicing by itself, which is at the top, the top, uh, the top note. And with the proper fingers, numbers. Okay, so you're making sure you're voicing that correctly. And using a lot of pedal as well. Okay, let me show you one more time now. Let's do it together from the pickup. Okay, ready, go. Okay, here's the left hand now. Okay, let's try that together. Ready, go. part of this B section and then of course we're going to call it B2. Okay, so we did B1, B2. Can you take a guess and look, see where it ends? It's going to end right around measure 20. And about measure 20, we're coming back to the guess what? A section, that's 21, okay? All right, so here is measure 17. Harmonic changes here. And then. So it's basically a first inversion of the G minor chord. Then A flat major chord. G major chord. C minor chord again. And then. And here we have a. Let me see here. That's correct. So it's an F sharp minor seventh, okay? Now here uh, we have sixth. Now here a seventh. I think it's much better to feel these impulses at one beat. practicing with metronome. The same thing here. And then it's, it's really odd to practice these, you know, odd numbers. 
But you want to, the easiest way to practice this, and I haven't really found a better piece of advice, is just to practice it without really thinking about it. Just let it go in one beat. And what's even harder is when you start to use a ritardando. So definitely just practice this straight, and we'll do it today as well. Okay, here's the right hand. Yeah, and then don't be a perfectionist about it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Like like I said with the whole space repetition thing, try it a few times. If you're having a really hard time, just let go for the day and then try it again the next day. I promise you it will get clear. Okay, right hand, ready, go. Okay, left hand. Together, ready, go. Back to both hands. back and put this entire B section together. It's the pickup from measure 13. I'm gonna give you right hand. Actually, let's play it first. Then we're gonna go back, try right hand, left hand, hands together. Right hand, pick up to measure 13. Ready, go. Can try it with me. Ready, go. Before we do this last section here, I wanted to ask you guys, if you have enjoyed this video, make sure you hit this like button. If, if you find it valuable and it's been helping you, uh, please, I would uh, really appreciate it. It really helps me to know uh, that this stuff is resonating with you guys. And also, if you want to share this video with other people as well, I definitely wouldn't mind that. Share this video with people who would appreciate this lesson as well. And also, make sure you stick around for the recap at the end, okay? Brief recap. All right. Uh, so we're going back into the A section and it's kind of like a just roughly looking at it from what I remember there's going to be like a we could call it like an A3 because it, it, it's a bit different so instead of calling it like an exact A1 
we're gonna consider it like an A1 sub whatever, but I just find it easier to say like A3. And then of course we have the coda at the end, okay? So let me play for you guys. measure 27 so actually it is actually more similar to and even the end so you know no easy way to explain this but uh, actually it, it is kind of simple so what I played from 21 to 27 is very similar to a1 actually so it's it's almost like a a1 but moving towards an ending and you can hear it in the music she's about to wrap it up so it's closer to A1 than like something that's different, like A3. So I'd say it's like a, a variation of A1. And then the last part. And you can hear it. Instead of going here, like the beginning, right? Whatever that chord was. So it's kind of deceptive, right? So instead of, this is like an A2. Expecting it to resolve, but instead she gives you, and then off we're, and then we're off to like an extended ending right there. Okay, all right. So I'll hit those points again. So anyway, from the top of the page, this is the uh, we're getting words here. Pick up to measure twenty one. Let me play it for you, and we're gonna stop at twenty seven. time you don't want to really make each sound beautiful like you can treat just treat it like a technical exercise if you want now if I, if I were practicing for speed uh, I'll show you different ways to practice this you can just do like a little different rhythms like a dotted rhythm you can do it the reverse dotted rhythm okay then you can go two at a time Okay, four at a time, and then the whole thing. You could also go making chords and doing it as fast as possible. Okay, lots of different ways. It's more tools you have in your arsenal to practice. It's way better. Okay, all right. Now this is really tricky. That part's gonna take a lot of practice. And then here, we're gonna slow down a bit, because we can. So here we take both hands. And I like to lift up on that to make sure that last note is to stop this one. And we have a fermata. So take some time right there, okay? So here we definitely need to take both hands, because it doesn't make sense to just do one hand at a time. So let's go back to the top of the page. I'm gonna give you right hand, but measure 26, be prepared to play that arpeggiation, arpeggio pattern. Okay, ready, go. You definitely can take time there, even though she does not indicate a, a, a retardando. Okay, here's the left hand, 21. Uh, same thing when we get to 26, we're going to take both hands there. Okay, here it is, 21. Right, 
Try it out with me. 21. Ready? Go. Back to both hands. Alright, try with me if you can. Ready, go. Okay, now here's the ending, which is like a, a different version of A2 slash going into a coda. And it might be a little bit off camera here, I don't know if you catch that, this is a G. back and try it again. Okay, but here's the right hand. And then remember instead of instead of going into E E flat uh, major, which is you know resolving this to the end, what she does here. She goes to a B major harmony. And then now we are ending the piece. Okay, let's try that together. Ready, go. And then slow down here because she says to play a lot slower. Kind of missed that the first time around. Alright, left hand. Try it together. Ready, go. Back both hands. Together, ready, go. Okay, now we're going to put this entire section together from the pickup to measure 21. So I'll do the same thing. I'm going to play first both hands, then we're going to try it hands separate together and then hands together. And then that'll be it for the lesson. Do a quick recap at the end to help uh, wrap things up for you guys. All right.
Okay, let's try right hand together. Ready, go. Okay, here's left hand now, 21, ready, go. Alright, both hands now. Ready, go. Okay, so back to the game plan for this piece. Uh, first practical considerations, when we're talking about practice, uh, how to practice this, we do small sections at a time, little small chunking, okay? So the first major section is the first page, actually. We're gonna call this A. There are three parts to this A section, from measure one to measure five, then we have measure five to measure nine, and then nine to the bottom of the page. So it's like, we can call it an intro, A1, a2, then when you have all these separately, you want to combine them together and then remember that if you're not able to do it, then your concentration may need to improve. It's like building a muscle, but then in this case, it's a mental muscle, okay? So look at the second page, so in the pick up to 13, we're gonna call this the B section, and then B1 is from the pick up to 13 to measure 17, B2 is 17 to measure 21, and then the same thing, you're gonna put that together as well. Then 21 to the end, we have like a slightly different version of A1, A2 section that leads to the end, okay? So it's just like a if 21 to 20, what, 6, it's like an altered version of, this is a different version of A1, slight differences, a little bit more, with arpeggio actions. And then 27 to the end, which sounds like A2, but then you hear it goes into a coda, which is the finish then put this last part together as well. Now some musical considerations, if you want to bring your music to the next level, is make sure you voice it correctly. Voice to the, to the top note in the right hand, no matter what you're doing. It's kind of tricky, okay? Uh, if you look up something that will help is uh, the idea of finger independence, a lot of exercises. I have a really, for some reason, popular live stream video on that. You can, make it look, you can look it up. You can look up Rhapsody Piano Studio, Advanced Finger Independence Exercises, something like that, okay? Um, yeah, and with the left hand, it's... What I like to do is, because it's a good musical thing to do, but it's also because my piano is quite old, so the pedal doesn't work as well. Voicing towards the bass. Both hands 
together, it makes the balance a lot uh, easier to uh, do. Now, if you look at, well, I guess not really. Yeah, I guess that is about it. I've covered all those points. Now, um, if you want to check out some other lessons I've done on this, I have a lot of other Martha Muir piano lessons as well. So those are pretty popular. And, and again, remember that when, you, when you're when you able to understand these things, you want to try to apply it on your own by testing out your own self-knowledge in the video tutorial, okay? And also understand that I'm doing this as a lesson. And sometimes people see this, it's, it's just kind of bothersome to me to see how incredibly you know, naive and impatient people are when it comes to these lessons. They feel like if you do one lesson today, you will know how to play it perfectly. That's not the case. Like if I teach something like this to a student, we might be working on this like weeks at a time. So the first week we might just be working on section A and the next week section B. And then last week tying it all together. So over time it takes about three weeks to a month possibly to do something like this, okay? so. Just really think about where you're at with your difficulty in terms of what kind of music you can play, how long it's gonna take you to figure out this piece, and if you're willing to do it like for a month or two months, then go at it. But if you really can't, if you don't have the patience to stomach this and to wait that long to finish this song, then do something at an easier level, okay? Just do something at an easier level, that's pretty simple. Uh, anyway, just do some common sense stuff. You're, not, you're most likely not going to be able to play this perfectly on the first day. All right, rant over. And also, lesson over. So thank you so much for watching this lesson and thank you for making it to the end. If you made it to the end, really appreciate your time. Uh, don't forget, before you go, to hit that like button and hit that subscribe button and notification reminders to catch when I go live. Uh, thank you so much for your time. I will see you guys for the next lesson and happy practicing.